Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Konstantin Korson. You may call me Kos. Um, and I'm not a hacker. I just only run uh, ethical hackers company in Ukraine. And I love to research many interesting and funny things related to cybersecurity. And one of such story I would share with you today. Who am I? I worked at security service of Ukraine at cyber, cyber crime department. Then I set up and ran a uh, governmental computer emergency response team. Uh, then I, after that, I worked at a couple of uh, international US-based companies. And five years ago, my partners and, and I set up our own uh, ethical hackers company. And, and and now I will talk uh, on interesting story on FRD. So, uh, as you probably know, Ukraine is uh, uh, under biggest cyber war ever since 2014. Uh, I, I would mention only a, a few most known facts on that cyber war. It uh, beginning with the uh, intrusion into Central Election Committee in the day of president election in May 2014. Uh, black energy malware uh, caused six hour blackout for more than 200,000 people for more than six hours. In June 2017, uh, NotPetya Viper uh, affected up to 30% of Ukrainian economy. Overall, since 2014, um, more than 100 politically motivated attacks happened. So, how those lessons uh, have been learned in Ukraine? A group of activists uh, asked this question to themselves and went to find the answers. They found incredible facts and set up fuck responsible disclosure as something like patriotic hackers flash mob. I would say this bad word only one time, fuck. And next time I'll be using abbreviation FRD. Just to let you know. Uh, what is FRD? Uh, back to terms. Responsible disclosure is when you reveal a vulnerability and let system owners know on that in a not public way. Normally, it doesn't work. Uh, other option is uh, full or irresponsible disclosure. When you just put all your findings directly in public, it works much more better. However, it could uh, cause a damage for the system. And in fact, you help cyber criminals to exploit the real vulnerability. Um, world known expert uh, Bruce Schneier believed that full disclosure is damn good idea. Uh, what FRD paradox in? Uh, paradox is that FRD is something like mix of responsible and irresponsible disclosure. Actually, um, active FRD activists uh, publish not every detail which could be used to exploit a vulnerability. They publish only the uh, main picture, probably, or maybe they point on the problem. And uh, their motivation is do not to make a damage, uh, just to improve security of the system. Uh, they do not provide any services to fix the problem, uh, and uh, they very often they just laugh on uh, officials' ignorance. And they love to say that I'm not a doctor, I'm just a pain. How legal FRD is? Uh, FRD is absolutely legal. I, I state it as a lawyer and uh, on base of local law enforcement's conclusions. Uh, of course, uh, FRD is not a pleasure for system owners, but it is, it's a, just a hard way to make them care on uh, 
community security. How it began? It began in uh, 2017, in October 6, when uh, FRD uh, official speaker under nickname Sean Townsend, Townsend published uh, uh, some screenshots on from open network disk of uh, water supply company. It's uh, they there. Don't even try to understand what is written there because it is in, in Russian. If you don't know Russian or Ukrainian, don't. It's, it's unclear. I, I would explain you. Uh, and uh, next next case uh, were related to uh, governmental computer emergency response team, uh, and the team contained. Uh, uh, password to their email directly on a, a website code like this. You can see, welcome to search was the password. Uh, next case uh, about critical infrastructure. Uh, Kiev is the capital of Ukraine and about 5 million people live there. And uh, Kiev Electric Supply Company is quite critical infrastructure. And however, they had open network disk as well. Uh, and this is, they, they just published this screenshot from uh, internal document in, from internal network. It's a not critical document, but just, just an, ev like an evidence. Uh, nuclear power plant. Very critical infrastructure. Uh, they had uh, as well open network disk. And of course, FRD activists completely realized how dangerous could be to show to the world open access to nuclear power station, nuclear power plant. So because of that, they publish uh, only um, not secret, just just document, uh, neutral documents from internal network, network to just to prove they had access without any hacking. Nothing had been crashed. And one more, oh, it is a screenshot from a nuclear power plant internal networks. This and one more, some some formulas, something like constants and constants descriptions. Uh, I don't know how, how critical this information is, and probably not, not very critical, I hope. And screenshot it as well from internal network. And this, more and more. And uh, next case. Uh, you should know biggest airplane in the world. N225. Um, Antonov Aviation Plate is, is manufacturer of uh, such kind of aircrafts, this one and many others. And um, the feature is that this uh, network had been hacked twice before. In both cases, the, the, those cases were investigated by security service of Ukraine and national cyber police. However, it seems lessons haven't been learned. Uh, state Financial Monitoring Agency, very serious organization, I, I guess. Uh, they used outdated PHP, uh, and last update was 10 years ago. And you can imagine how many vulnerabilities it contained. Uh, now it's fixed already. Uh, Prosecutor's General's Office, just only XSS, nothing special. Uh, national Police, internal network, again, open network, no passwords. Uh, logins, password, access to internal services, video cameras were available directly without no hacking, no cracking, nothing else, just to know where to go and what to find. And this is a screenshot from uh, video cameras records from internal national police network. And 
interesting feature that every single person could be added to local search national police database. It, 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 it was available. And National Defense and Security Council accesses. And this is just, just like a joke. It is of how could National Defense and Security Council website look like from, from user site only, not from server, server one. Uh, public Health Ministry, they own a state database of medical uh, examinations. Uh, it's related to drivers, to pilots, to gunfighters, etc. Uh, through command git clone, and you get source code, data database, password, admin account, and open access inside very personal and very critical information. Uh, Kherson Provincial Council. Uh, at first, at a glance, it, it was uh, just a uh, standard problem, open access to internal network disk without any password. Uh, but I would explain this case more uh, because it reflects relationships between FRD activists and uh, system owners. Five stages of a grief uh, was first time introduced by Swiss American psychiatrist Miss Elizabeth Kubler Ross in 1969. Denial, anger, bargaining, acceptance, uh, depressions, and acceptance. On, in this case, uh, first stages were shock and denial. It's just a provocation. Then we haven't been hacked. On the screenshot, you can see the official statement of uh, provincial council. Uh, next stage, anger. We complain to the police. So, at first stage, it was we haven't been hacked. No document have been leaked, but we complain to the police. Where's the logic? Uh, next stage, bargaining. Uh, Councillor Katerina Hanzuk asked uh, um, activists uh, to explain more what's happening and what problem they had in, in the internal network. And final stage, acceptance. Councillor, other councillor, Halina Lashevska, thanked activists for their job and for their explanation all the night. Uh, this is the list of how normally uh, system owners uh, react to FRD actions or publications. Uh, we haven't been hacked. We don't have any critical or secret information. We complain the police and best one. It was customized attack by our competitors or enemies. Uh, overall, I detected more than 100 uh, publication and, uh, publications under hashtag FRD, and uh, mainly they are related to uh, government and public authorities. Uh, you can see the list, and and more and more and more and more very serious organization, highest level in, in the country, uh, mainly. Uh, courts, critical infrastructure, councils, many, many provincial and uh, district administrations and councils. Uh, also, very critical infrastructure uh, in, the, in, in the impact. It's railways, uh, power, nuclear power plants, uh, energy uh, enterprises, military industry enterprises, a lot of. I have maybe about one about 2,000 screenshots from, from many FRD cases. It's only main one. Uh, most popular vulnerabilities, of course, it's first, first of them is open network disk without any password. 
it's very wide problem. Uh, XSS, outdated content management systems, uh, outdated web servers, old versions uh, of governmental websites, SQL injections, and of course HTTP instead, instead of uh, HTTPS. Uh, what to say, it's, it's nightmare. Uh, about consequences. Every FRD case caused big resonance in media. Some people were fired. Uh, in some companies, uh, budgets for cybersecurity increased, and more and more people understood more on cybersecurity as an industry. Uh, bless you. Uh, more and more professional guy, uh, cybersec guy, uh, got professional certificates, and cooperation between government and private sector became better. A bit, but better. Additionally, my colleagues and I, uh, questionnaire 23, uh, Ukrainian top experts in cybersecurity, what they they do on FRD and its influence into cybersecurity national level. Uh, majority of them uh, said that cybersecurity in Ukraine has increased since 2014 because of mainly because of cyber war and massive cyber cyber attacks. Bless you again. Uh, 13 of 23 experts uh, said that FRD influenced on that significantly, significantly or partially, I mean, uh, increase in cybersecurity level. However, only uh, almost 10, 90% of them uh, uh, believed that FRD was not a critical uh, factor for the growth However, I believe in FRD. Uh, it was a big surprise for me, but it, it is. Um, and back to how legal FRD is. This gentleman on uh, the screenshot, screenshot from, uh, from video in YouTube is a head of uh, National Cyber Police. And on this video, he's saying that FRD is... Uh, useful thing, and National Cyber Police supports it. Uh, also, Cyber Crime Department at Security Service of Ukraine supports FRD, and National Defense and Security Council also do support it. Conclusions. Uh, what mainly FRD is a fun for activists, for volunteers, uh, FRD is something, it's, it's funny activity, and they laugh, laughing on uh, officials' ignorance. Uh, as I said twice before, FRD is illegal, absolutely legal. Uh, at the same time, FRD is very positive thing, thing for national cybersecurity, and government Government supports FRD. Okay, okay, we support it. Okay, yeah. Uh, and FRD is continuing right now because uh, uh, this presentation is number one of my presentation. I also have number two and number three presentation. I, I showed it at a couple of uh, cybersecurity conference in my country. Uh, and if you put FRD hashtag in Facebook directly right now. You can find a lot of information, however, in Russian or in Ukrainian. Uh, my kudos to uh, FRD activists, because of uh, them, this presentation became existent. FRD helps to my country to protect itself against cyber aggressions. It uh, definitely works. It, it a bit, but it definitely works. And that's all for today from my side. Thank you. So, are there any questions? Any questions in the room? Here we have.
Hi. Uh, when you say legal, you mean legal in Ukraine or because I can't imagine that is legal everywhere? For, for sure, in some, some Mainly, place like uh, China or so, it will not be. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, it's a Ukrainian patriotic hacker slash mob like that, and uh, the, 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 they aim to, to pr protect our country against cyber aggression mainly, so they focus in, in Ukrainian web resources only. So uh, you mean to say that if I go to Ukraine and if I hack into one of the services there and um, publish screenshots, uh, provided that the information there, critical information there is uh, hidden, would that count as a illegal activity too? Would I? Would that be uh, Would that be legal or illegal? If you go yeah. to Ukraine, yeah, but. From if, in, you, if you if you hack inside. something, you you <laughs> it won't be legal. If uh, if you don't hack, it's it's, it's legal. So uh, trying out admin admin would that be counted as hacking? Admin password and admin username will that be counted as hacking there in in Ukraine? Uh, feature of FRD that they do not hack anything. Uh, I, I was talking about yeah. the FRD. They do not hack. It's open access. Uh, nothing had been hacked. They are not hacked because because of that. It, it's a legal activity because uh, activists didn't hack anything. No, no, no. Uh, so you so so it it seems that if they didn't change the password for admin and they left it for default password as admin. Then if I try it and if I successfully get into the system, it's not counted as a hack. No. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. Ukrainian law enforcement uh, believe that that that, that FRD is is legal. It's they, they didn't hack anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to give more insights. Like if you have exposed camera without passwords and anybody can watch it. If you just trans uh, make a screenshot of it, it's not illegal. It's a il probably it's, it's illegal for system owners who didn't care on protection their, their internal network, probably so. So uh, FRD activists went in, in through open door into the ne uh, network in terror and it, it published uh, screenshots from cameras, uh, et cetera, and other things. Hi, uh, just to echo the point before, because you keep repeating that uh, we believe it's legal, we believe it's legal, but belief usually is a bit different than reality. So did you get a lawyer or few lawyers to actually examine the Ukrainian law and confirm that this is legal? Because I'm very suspicious about that, because you show the screenshots from systems, internal systems and internal networks, and there is no way you can get into those screenshots without actually breaching some kind of access perimeter, which is very illegal in most of the world uh, in terms of laws. So did you get like legal advice that confirms, yeah, those activities are not illegal or is it just like, <laughs> depending on the word of the police chief, which I wouldn't really rely on if I were you? <laughs> uh. Actually, I, I would say that Ukrainian <laughs> uh, cyber legislation is not uh, ideal, of course, and uh, publishing probably uh, some evidences in public, uh, it could... Uh, mm, uh, current legislation allows such kind of... It's not a crime, actually. Uh, so... Uh, Mm. I'll be thinking on your question, by the way. It's an interesting aspect. Okay, any further questions? Yep. Just to uh, park the legal, not legal discussion for a bit, um, how organized is the, the whole FRD group? I mean, I can imagine that they have some um, yeah, agreements between them just to make sure that no one crosses the line. But I mean, are there some key figures? How how do they communicate, and how does that work? How how does it work? What 
well, the uh, organization, well, it's it's decentralized, I guess. But um, yeah, who decides mm. why, how far the line is and when to cross the line or not? I mean, it's just accessing open systems, of course. But is that just a common agreement between those people, or? As I understood your question correctly, uh, mm, actually, uh, computer emergency response team in in uh, in, in, in every, every country or other similar organization could could organize all, all possible measure, measures to control uh, most critical infrastructure or maybe government uh, websites or government networks. But mm, in fact, uh, it doesn't work actually. So organization is very weak. In, in 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 Ukraine right now, so and authorities and uh, uh, com local community work together to 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 get it better, to improve some something like uh, national cybersecurity system whole whole the country, uh, and but nowadays it 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 still doesn't work unfortunately. Any further questions? Okay, well, we'll be taking a break now, I think. We're taking a break now. Yep, okay. Yeah, thank you.